if you've been thinking about a three-in-one voltage supply soldering gun and rework station, I'm going to share what I work with and maybe just some little workarounds in case you encounter some of these idiosyncrasies. Yiwa A53D USB. It has a, a sleep for your solder and it has the auto off for this. So two big safety features. Don't skimp on the USB model thinking it's just about the USB because what's more important is it's got safety stuff. This is kind of it at a glance and I've kind of highlighted some stuff on here. Essentially it's a soldering iron which is here and it comes with different accessories whatever and it's got this uh, rework hot air gun with a bunch of different tips i've got those hanging on the wall what's cool with this unit it comes with a bunch of different additional stuff because it's part of the usb model it has a, a sleep for your solder and it has the auto off for this with this you see put that back in the handle and it turned off so it's got an auto off so it doesn't burn up the heating element inside or light anything on fire if you forget this thing is on so pull it out Going right to hot. Again, a bunch of different tips. This is your temperature for your solder. This is your temperature for your rework. And this is your auto on off. If I want to keep this thing going because I'm constantly picking it up and putting it down, take that out. It kicks right back on. And then this is also your speed for your hot air gun. Not all of this is intuitive because this knob really should be by that display. I've got a little etching gun. I etched up the face of this thing to uh, let myself know what's what and how to do things. So this also has a DC power source. So you can see right now it's, it's showing the voltage. It's got an adjustable voltage set up here and uh, it's got two different power outs. It's got an industrial one over here that's a 35 volt only so you can kind of see down here. So you can do a uh, 35 volt out if you do industrial applications. I put tape over mine because I don't want to accidentally plug in there and fry my stuff because I'm looking to use lower voltage, which comes out of this. This comes with two banana plugs that go into there. So it's got an option here. And then, so if you're trying to test voltage, yeah, it'll start with the zero, but if you go here and it's set to something, then that's what you're pushing out on those rather than testing. And then you can charge your phone on here or whatever, but that's the USB port. You might look at this and be like, ah, oh, it's pretty low. You know, when I first started using this thing, this thing was up in the 800s and I'm like, why is it only getting up to 480 max? Turns out it accidentally, somehow magically turned to Celsius. And I'm gonna show you right now how I toggle back and forth. So you can see right now that's at 480 and that's maxed out. Both these max out at 480, but that's Celsius. So if you ever think your power split in half, it's probably because of this. What you do, if you wanna toggle that back, you have to have both of these on. You push your down arrow on your solder and your up arrow on your rework, but you gotta press them at the same time. And the first thing you notice is L10. What you can do, if you go up to the rework, that's where you toggle your Celsius and Fahrenheit. Now we're back in Fahrenheit, so we can go beyond 480. And the same goes for up here too. So now we're 896 rather than 480. And that L10, what that's a part of is that's your sleep for your solder. Soldering iron senses when it's been sitting for a while. So, and it'll just go down to 200. It won't go completely off. But when you push and hold this, you can toggle how long you want that time to be before it goes to sleep. I know it goes up to at least 30 minutes. Let's get back down to where I was. And if you just let it go, it'll go off. If you need to be very meticulous and um, want to test the tip of your soldering iron, and if you do that and you find that the temperature is not quite what it should be, like it says 624, but it's actually at 620, then you can adjust the calibration by pushing and holding the temperature on the solder up and down at the same time. And now you can see it's got these little dots in there and then you can change and be like, okay, now it's 620. And then you push them both and you're done. Pretty much everything. And yeah, so, and it's also got a master power switch on the back, but it does let you know that all of these, that it is turned on. Oh, one more thing. I thought it was a bum unit. I'd read with other people about things stopping working. Did at some point start losing a little bit of this. This panel would go dark. And then I'd had to push and hold real hard on here to get it to turn on. But for a while, I thought it was dead. Anyway, it wasn't. And I, I think I ended up bashing this face a few times and then magically it started working again. So just today, I opened it up and found out it really wasn't that big of a deal. I was thinking that maybe something on the board had overheated and started to melt off. I've had that happen on a computer before. But what it was, was you see these are kind of tethered here. I found that when I shook this, it would turn on and off. So I ended up finding that one of these, this little guy was actually half out. So that was a, an easy fix, whatever. Anyway, it's a great unit. There may be some loose stuff in there, but the price is really good and it's really held up. If it helped you out, give a thumbs up. Feel free to subscribe. Take care. I'm out.